How are you doing, people? Tell me. That's not rhetorical. Tell me immediately how you're doing. <laughs> Welcome to a Q&A with your host, me. Welcome to the home office. It is as yet incomplete, but when it is complete, I will uh, do some kind of home office transformation slash tour type video for your viewing. So, you know, people are excited about seeing the home gym, but everyone's sleeping on the home office setup, man. Anyway, I thought I'd do a Q&A, simply because I wanted to. I don't think I need an excuse to talk to you, do I? You know what I mean? If I want to like take some thoughts, get them out of my brain, turn them into MP4 format, upload them to the internet, I think that is allowed, isn't it? So, before we start this video, we're sponsored by Squarespace. You know what they do, don't you, by now? If you don't, that's where you go when you need a website. I'll do more. I'll do like the proper advert in a bit for now. Shout out to Squarespace, right? We've got some questions, I'm going to try and answer them, try and be as succinct as I possibly can, but I find it difficult, mate, I'm, I'm prone to tangents, so I'm just going to chill out, I'm not going to try and like blast through as many possible questions, because as many questions as possible, because I think then it'll just, it'll make the answers shit, so I'm just going to take my time, sit, chill, and chat, let's do it. Hey Joey D, what's helped you grow your online brand, especially at the beginning? See, when you got any kind of like online presence, right, everyone talks to you as if you are like a brand, like not a person, right? I've never thought of myself as like a brand, right? I've, I've never, it, it might have happened like subconsciously that there are certain like things that people associate with me, but like, I haven't got a logo, right? I haven't, I don't like try and like, I, th I feel like branding is a conscious thing, isn't it? And I'm not saying it doesn't have a place in the world of like online business. I'm sure it does, but it's just not something that I've like really contemplated too much. I think I was just, I'm just, a, I'm just bad at, at trying to, to, to be anything, right? And I'm, I'm not even saying like, oh yeah, I'm so like, I'm so like, I'm the realist motherfucker. Although I do say that a lot, but obviously like most of the time, I'm, most of the time when I say that I'm being sarcastic because it, I feel like it's so overblown, it's such a cliche and it's like so much more complex than that. Um, but I just never became that uh, into like viewing myself that way. I suppose what helped me connect with people is I try and speak to the camera like it's a human, right? That might sound a bit weird, but when you see an advert on TV, right, it's it's not how people speak to each other, right? If you watch a soap or some kind of film or something, right, it's not how people speak to each other, right? And I think if you allow that and 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 it becomes a new norm, that's how you end up with shit like politicians who just don't speak like humans, right? A politician could be telling a story about, you know, it could be telling a children's story about a farm, like farmyard animal stories or some shit, right? <laughs> Bear with me. And you would know that it's a politician talking by how they talk, right? Because it's robotic, it's indirect. It's just, it's like evasive, you know, and I just never want to find myself being like that, man, because it takes away from your, not just your experience, but it takes away from my experience because shit's about connection, right? And, you know, why did reality TV become the most popular thing on TV, right? Because of the reality aspect of it. Why did social media rise so meteor me meteoric me meteorically? Is that a word? All right? Because people liked the more human aspect to it. It was raw, mate. Someone vlogging. It's a shaky fucking camera, right? You can watch a vlog, or you can watch like this, like a film that costs like fifty million or hundreds of millions to produce, right? And people still choose the vlog, right? Because people want people, people like people, right? And so, 
I don't know about like, I'm not saying that if that you should just, that this applies to everyone. I can only speak for my situation. If you're some kind of brand, a, a, you know, this big online business or a big business anywhere, right? Maybe you have to consider branding much more than somebody who's like an individual like me. That was in, indirect, but. <laughs> have you always been this philosophical? Well, it says, have you always this philosophical? Well, I think it means being this philosophical. Um, like, I don't like to call myself philosophical, right? Because I just feel like there's an, there's an air of like pretentiousness about it, pretension. And I don't want to come across as like, I think I'm this like big Zen guru guy, right? I think about shit a lot, right? I ponder the things that fascinate me a lot, right? And when I was younger, I was lucky enough to be able to like dedicate some time to that, right? I was lucky enough to go travel on my own for a bit, like multiple times, or even when I've traveled with other people, then have periods on my own, whatever. And I was lucky enough to have some some time to sit there and like truly just fucking think about shit, right? But but to be honest, you, you don't have, you don't have to be not doing anything else to be pondering life's great mysteries, right? You can be pondering them while you're going through your day. And that is just something that I've always been prone to. I've always been like super curious, like super deeply curious about just everything really because life blows my fucking mind like shit shit is crazy man i can't believe anything it's fully difficult it's, it's so difficult to really comprehend life right and that's a dangerous line because some people find that like disturbing right and i can understand that i can understand how people find you know something like the you know infinite capacity of the universe the in infinite nature of the universe to be somewhat unsettling, right? And you, uh, you have to be careful of that, but I just, I don't, I've never had a problem, like, which is which is strange, I think, because it's hard to be confused about everything but not find it harrowing, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, I have always been like, something like just ever since I, was, I can remember, I've always just thought about shit, really, asked a lot of questions, right? And, um, you know, there's a, there's a difference between thinking and overthinking, right? And do you know what? That I'm gonna that will take me twenty minutes to go through, so I'm gonna talk about it in a podcast or something. Is there a YouTube journey video on the way at some point? No, probably maybe. I don't know. Like I wanna write memoirs or some shit, right? But then I feel like you have to have done I don't feel like I'm not worthy of memoirs because you have to have had like an eventful life and done shit, right? I want to write a book or something. I want to write shit, I think. Maybe I'd make a video as well, but... But it wouldn't really be about my life, because it would be more about my views on life and how they came to be, you know, how they were shaped through my experiences. Just, no, there isn't yet, but maybe there will be at some point. I'm five foot ten and feel short in the UK. Snap. Well, everyone... My girlfriend says I'm five nine and a half, but I think she's lying. I think I'm five ten. <laughs> anyway, who cares, right? I feel short in the UK. My question is, what do you think of girl birds, girls who only date tall guys? I don't really think anything of them. I think it's fine. I think you can date whoever the fuck you want on. If you want to date like fat people, skinny people, tall people, short people. I feel like it's your choice and it's not like it's not nothing against them. Like you get to choose who you have sex with, man. That's just your own individual liberty. Like you can't take that away from people, and I don't think you can judge anyone for their choice. Now, if you think that it's a narrow-minded like thing, then then whatever. And you're free. You're also free to think that it doesn't really matter. Like, and you know what I mean. Also, like side note, some girls say that they'll only date tall guys, but. You know, maybe they just never met a sick five foot ten guy. Maybe you can be the first one. Um, so it I, I like I've heard that before. It doesn't really stick. Like, you know. Um. Anyway, yeah. But even if you do, so what? How do you, th Sojo? How do you think becoming a sophisticated cunt has affected your vibiness? <laughs> um, I've always been sophisticated, mate. I don't know what you're about, really. 
um, I guess you perceive vibiness as like outward, like outward liveliness, right? That's and I, I understand that that's how people perceive it, right? It's not how I feel about it, but people perceive people perceive like vibiness as like how loud you are, right? How loud you shout. Do I turn the camera on and go like, right, fucking guys, yeah, ah, you know? Maybe I'm less like that, right? That's fine. I'm all right. I'm cool with it. Are you cool with it? That's the question, man. How do you think it has? Dealing with insecurity, that's not really a question. That's just three words. You need to, I guess it's how to deal with insecurity. Um, that'd be, that's a very broad question, man. Something that I don't feel qualified to really surmise in a, in a, in a YouTube Q&A, maybe I'll, but then again, I'm not qualified because like, I, like I've got some insecurities, right? But I don't feel like it's to any like above normal degree. I feel like it's just average levels of insecurity, which isn't, which is average. Like, so I'm probably not qualified. On. Is being a player satisfying and would you recommend experiencing it? Well, my first disclaimer would be that I would never class myself as ever having been a quote-unquote player. Now, I understand that some of the characteristics I have, you know, exhibited at some points may fit in with people's archetype of what is a player. But I was never dishonest with people, right? I was never, like, I see a player as someone who's, like, just a snide motherfucker, like, just a sneaky, sneaky dude who, like, lies to girls trying like get get his way and stuff i was always open honest you know um but is that kind of so that i don't think like being disingenuous i don't think lying is ever a route to a, a feeling of satisfaction like because it's not you is it right because you might think all oh, right well i can only get these girls if i lie to them so not that i want to plant that seed but it's probably true, right? Um, and so uh, it's probably not uh, probably not satisfying. Uh, did I find my single days and my single escapades satisfying? Yes and no, like yeah, in in some ways certainly, like because you know there's there's a satisfy there's a satisfying nature to like thrill, um, but also very much no in some ways. Like some of the conversations I used to have with Tom, like. <laughs> They were like just funny, um, because I I would. It depends who you meet, and you you put you have to put as much effort into single life as you do into a relationship, right? Probably more actually. I don't know. It depends, but you can't just go out and just meet anyone, because you'll start spending time. You know, once you start valuing your time a bit more, you're like, wow, why did I just waste the Tuesday afternoon on her, man? Not that. I don't want to be offensive to anyone, but these are only hypothetical, hypothetical, hypothetical people anyway, all right? Because if you're just meeting people who are like, just don't do, don't do anything for you, and it's just like, the ego boost will start to deteriorate, and then it's just a person, and you're like, right, I'm just near a person for four hours this afternoon, what's the point, like, you know? I achieved nothing, like, there's certainly emptiness in that, <laughs> in that thing, but I'm not saying that it's completely, like, it depends how you go about it. There's certain... There's certainly fulfillment to be had as well, you know, but just, who knows, man, that's the whole point of experiencing it yourself. Would I recommend experiencing it? Not being a player, but I'd recommend, like, putting some effort into being single, definitely. Most, value exp most valuable experience you've had for life perspective? I would, if I had to, like, boil it down, I would say traveling alone was probably the most, probably the thing that helped to shape my psyche most probably gave me the most long-lasting feels of inner peace and tranquility, right? And probably made me made me a better person um, because I just needed to satisfy that, you know. I just needed to. I just I just needed to, man. I'm just not. Everyone thinks they're not normal, right? I'm not different. I just don't think I'm normal, right? And. Uh, I have just boundless fucking curiosity and I needed to be away on my own because I needed to be with a load of people and like just partying and have all these sick new mates and then I needed to be on my own 
for a week and barely speak to another human and just drill through books like a rapid, you know, do nothing else, right? I needed a mixture of like intense social situations and solitude, right? I need, I needed everything. I needed just the, the widest array of experiences I could possibly put inside my brain, right? So travel on your own, you know, be safe about it. But don't worry, man, you, you, can, you can meet people whenever you want. It's easy. You just go, Aya, my name's Joe. Unless, obviously, you don't say Joe. <laughs> Unless it is Joe. You could say Joe. That's the beauty of it, right? You can make up a name, right? If it's someone you're just hanging, out, hanging around with for a day, you can be like, right, my name's Kevin. And then you can be like, yo, Kev. He'd be calling you Kev all day. Next day, you're fucking off to the next island or whatever. You know, and they're like, see you later, Kev. And they're like, oh, Kev was sound, wasn't he? Forever there telling the mates about Kev. Your name's not even Kev. Did you and Tommy B get matching tats and did he <laughs> later cover his? This is true, yeah. I ain't mad about it, man. You can do what you want with your tat. It's still there underneath, in it? So that's, that's, that's all I care about. It's linked forever, man. <laughs> do you miss the Ibiza days? No. If I missed Ibiza, I'd be in Ibiza, right? There's nothing stopping me. Everything's always your choice, right? I'd be there right now. Actually, the last... Last time I went to Ibiza, I only went because Tom was going anyway. Tom asked me, and I hadn't been away with Tom for ages, and I thought it'd be good to like see me mate for a bit. The time before that, 2018, I only went because it was free, right? Boohoo paid for it, and I went with a lot of people. It was sick, right? But after 2017, my enthusiasm for Ibiza was just meh. Because I started going in 2013, right? I went once in 2013, once in 2014, twice in 2015. 2016, 2017, you know, after that, my, my enthusiasm for it started to dip a bit, because you just can't do the same shit over and over, man, I, feel, I felt like I'd hit it from every angle, having said that, I'm going back next year, so, <laughs> but I can't, you know, it's a stag do, so, Whatever. I'm happy to do it, again, that'll be a different angle, hopefully, how are you such a pleasant human being, it's hard, you know, I, I sometimes wonder that, sometimes look at myself in the mirror and think, wow, that's, that's a, that's a pleasantness that knows no bounds. You should find a way to bottle that and sell it, but thus, thus far, I haven't, so I don't know, man. Are you on a hair loss prevention regimen? No. I see a lot of people advertising like hair loss prevention stuff these days. Sorry about the noise. There's obviously something going on outside. We're going to carry on. Uh, I see a lot of people like advertising hair loss prevention stuff. Uh, no, I haven't really thought about it. If I lose my hair, I'm not that arsed about it, to be honest. Like, I, I haven't got the best hairline, so I'll just do this with my fringe for a bit. So it's fine, but I don't think my hairline's actually going anywhere. Do you know what I mean? When I had my hair tied back, when I had it long, everyone's like, oh, you're bald and just accept the bald life. And I was like, I'm not going bald, mate. I've just got a shit hairline. Uh, but I don't really care. Like, you just be, just be bald, man. Nothing wrong with that, is there? Like, is there something wrong with being bald? I thought we were all supposed to like accept everything and like, you know, is that part of your body? We're supposed to like accept everyone's body and accept everyone's differences, right? These these companies, that these like virtue signaling com companies, yeah. So what about accepting like boldness, right? Isn't that all right? What about, you know, liking how your lips look? Whereas there's some, there's some kind of like disconnect here between like messages about body image and, and you know, self-image and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. How much did the house cost? The house was three... This one, I won't answer this, but a lot of people ask me, so... Actually, I probably would answer it. I don't really give a fuck. The house was three, nine, eight, nine, nine, seven, or something like that. Three, nine, seven, nine, nine, eight. It's the best part of 400, right? Which is like... But the thing about house prices, right, depends on area. So you might be thinking, right, oh, shit, you got a lot of house for that. You might be thinking you got fuck all for that, right? Depends on the area, doesn't it? I watched Max Tunin's videos, like, a couple of weeks ago. Well, a couple of months ago, he got a house, right? 500K it cost him. I converted it, basically same. 500K US dollars, right? I converted it, basically same cost, right? His house is massive. It's huge, mate. Like, compared to what you get around here, like, whatever. You gotta choose, haven't you? You've always gotta like unless you've got like silly money, you've gotta choose like what can you afford 
Do you want to get max what you can afford? Do you want to max out the mortgage that someone can give you? Probably not, like, I don't know. It's probably not a great idea. Um, and then where do you want to be? What do you need? How far do you want to be from a city? All that kind of thing. Just things you have to think about. I'm going to talk about buying a house in, an, in another video soon, I think. So, Why did you start saving for your house? Or did you just have money saved and said, fuck it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was... Hmm... I suppose I started saving when I started mo when I moved to Manchester, right? When I moved to Manchester, I had no money. Like that's the secret between me and you now. Like no money, basically. Uh, and I wasn't making enough money. I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't running my shit very well. I didn't think I was making enough money to really live there, right? Pay me rent and all that kind of shit. But I just thought, fuck it, do it, and then deal with it. And you'll and and you know, that's probably bad financial advice, uh, but. I have to put pressure on myself, right? And it turns out it was completely fine. And immediately after I started moving there, I started making better money and then gradually better and better and better. And then by the, this time, I was like, by, we actually decided to get a house like ages ago. It was like late last year. But the, uh, like, it, it, it took a while to um, find one, you know, and then we were supposed to move in here like months ago but then because it's a new build lockdown happened it didn't get completed until like a few months after schedule so yeah i'm going to talk about buying a house i'm going to also talk about some kind of personal finance stuff as well because i've, I've learned some lessons over the years and uh, i would like to share them so i'm going to do some separate videos or something i think did you always want to be a fitness influencer or did you have other plans no i don't think i did always want to be a fitness influencer if that's what i am People don't like calling themselves influencer, do they? Because it, it the word influence has got connotations of, like, manipulation, right? Influence is, is, is not far from manipulate. And uh, you don't want to feel like a manipulator, right? Because that's got bad, that's got negative, like, connotations. But I guess that's what I am, whatever. I make YouTube videos. I'm an online personal trainer. You know, I'm, I sell stuff for, for people. Like, you know, people's clothes, people's supplements, I advertise Squarespace, right? I'm gonna do my Squarespace out here. <laughs> That's relevant. So another shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring another Joey D video. If you need a website, even if you don't need one and you just want one, then you should do it through Squarespace because it's easy, mate. Look, I did it. So you just start by choosing a template that you think suits your vision best and then you can tweak it with the style editor to put your own touch on things. And if you're indecisive, you can choose two templates and then you can work on them both and then switch between them. So really it's a super easy way of creating a cool looking website with all the functionality you could really want. If you want to sell stuff, you can list an unlimited number of items. You can set up discount codes, all that kind of stuff. If you want people to book in appointments, you can do that too. If you want to embed YouTube videos or podcasts, guess what? You can do that too. So whether you want to set up an online store selling hand-painted garden gnomes or just a blog about the life and times of your pet guinea pig. It's all possible, right? Just go to squarespace.com. You can start a free trial now. And then when you want to take the plunge, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash Joe Delaney and get 10% off your first order. But did I want to be a fitness influencer? <laughs> Probably didn't even think about it because when I started it, it wasn't really a thing. When Shit just happened, and, and you, I don't, I don't, I don't underestimate how lucky I am for shit to just happen well, because a lot of shit just happens, and a lot of times not doesn't end out, doesn't turn out this good. No. I'm lucky beyond beyond measure, really. Um, but I, I think I certainly want to be more than a fitness influencer. Not not to denigrate the term, not to denigrate or you know say anything about others. But I think I want to be considered as more than a fitness influencer. Maybe I have to do some good shit, though, to, to, for people to define me that way. But I'll just do it. It's fine. I can tell you're very smart. How come you didn't go to uni? I don't think I'm very smart. Like, what, why, like why do you think I'm very smart? Like, sometimes, I, you know, I enjoy using some words that aren't common you know, aren't common, like some, some slightly less common words, but I don't think that really is an indication of like intelligence. I, I really don't consider myself 
to be particularly smart. Like I'm just, I'm just normal. I actually don't think there's that much. This is a weird paradox, like a weird contradiction. I actually don't think there's that much, that many qualities. Like I'm not particularly intelligent. I'm not particularly creative. I'm not particularly hard work. I'm not particularly anything, man. But that's not going to stop me from doing anything, right? Because I believe that like normal people can still do good shit, right? I did go to uni. I did maths at uni, right? Anyway. Have you and Mags talked about what happens financially with the house in case you split up? Um, one of us would just buy the other out, probably, you know. So it'd be complex, mate, because you, you're thinking like, right, who paid for what, you know, um, trying to do the maths. But I suppose if you want to break up, if it's that bad, right, if you want to break up, then you don't care, do you? You just, you just want to get rid of each other. You're just like, Ugh. you know what I mean? That's how I've felt in previous breakups anyway. <laughs> Um, so, I don't know, we'll just saw the couch in half, who knows, man. <laughs> Have you always been a very frugal person? Like, I wouldn't describe myself as frugal, right? I, I just have areas where I'm, yeah, maybe I am in some, some aspects, that right, but what, I don't think there's anything, I feel like a bit of frugality should be encouraged rather than just endless, like, just, just uncontrolled consumerism, like, uh, you know, I'm certainly frugal in some aspects. There are some things, right? But but there are other areas where I'm not, right? For example, there's a new place in Manchester. I don't want. I'm not going to name it because I don't want to throw shade or anything. There's a new place in Manchester, newish, just like baked goods, right? The, the particular these they look really nice. I've seen them on Instagram. I've walked past, look at them, right? The particular cost of this baked good is, I think it's I think it's quite high, right? For for what it is. I don't want to give you context. I don't want people to guess who it is because I don't want to actually throw shade at them. Like whatever business is business. If people pay it, people pay it. But like I've spent money on stuff before, right? I've spent what people would consider a lot, a lot of money on certain things, right? This is just a cheap baked good, but because I consider it above the value, like when Max told me the price, I was like, "Wow, that's crazy. We're never getting one of them. Like that's not okay, man." Like, even though it's only like literally a few quid, do you know what I mean? But because I consider it above the value. You have to make those calls, don't you? You can't be mindless. Like you can't be a mindless consumer. You have to decide like what matters to you. What do you want to spend money on? I've spent a lot of money on travel in my life, like a lot of money, right? I've spent money on other shit, but the stuff. This it's just the, the typical things. Like I spend a lot of money eating out as well, right? But it's just the typical things, or not the typical thing. The things that most people spend money on are the things that just don't do it for me, right? So. I don't really get expensive like clothes, trainers and stuff like that. I might get one thing once in a while. I'm not really bothered about like throwing dough into a car, like all that kind of stuff. It's not that I wouldn't, it's just that for me to spend like a lot of money on like a sick car or something, I'd have to have like crazy amounts of money first. Do you know what I mean? I feel like you have to look at things proportionally to like your net worth, right? Should you have a car that's like valued more than your net worth right if it's like on finance or some shit i would say no mate i would say you can't afford that car right let's say you got five grand in your bank do you want to buy a pair of trainers that would cost 500 quid right it's 10 percent of your net worth basically assuming you have no other possessions right do you want to do that probably not right but you know i used to walk around aldi with my dad when i was a kid get the get the cocoa pops that weren't actually cocoa pops and he'd be like you know they're exactly the same and i'm like they're not the same you know i could tell the difference right but you have to learn man i'm glad i learned a bit of frugality you know because it's a good life skill it's just being just being responsible and being and aside from the financial aspect of it you don't want to just spoil yourself right it's not just other people it's not just like parents that spoil children People spoil themselves, right? Payday comes around, like, just whack all your dough on something that, you know, and then you're going to run out of money before next payday, you know? Using credit cards when you can't really afford it, that kind of shit. And you spoil yourself and you get used to having everything and being telling yourself yes all the time. If this noise is annoying, I'm sorry about it. Like, I'm going to try and reduce it in post. Anyway, you know, yeah, whatever. Ever invest in the stock market? No, not, well, not actively anyway. Do you know what I mean? I have like some index funds, like an ISA and a pension, but nothing active. Like I wouldn't, 
if I, unless I knew a lot more about it, I'd have a flutter like, but unless I knew a lot more about it, I wouldn't be throwing any considerable amount, about amounts of money into particular stocks. Like physique goals for your thirties, maintain the shreds, never bulk again. So physique goals for your thirties. I don't think being thirty changes it really. You just want to get in the sickest shape I've ever gotten before. Right. So so right now what I'm doing is not tracking my calves, eating whatever I want. Getting back to training, some decent intensity. I'm gonna try me try and build my strength up. I wanna kind of injury proof myself. I wanna keep working on like my mobility, stretch, and also like strengthening strengthening up some areas that I don't focus on enough. You know, doing that kind of uh, preventative work because I wanna injury proof myself. You know, before ahead of time. Like uh, I wanna I wanna like wake up in the morning and feel like fresh and like I could. Like, you could go straight into a 100-meter sprint at full pelt, not, like, you know, creak out of bed and shit. So I think, like, you have to think ahead about that stuff. Otherwise, it'll creep up on you. So keep eating whatever I want. Keep training. Keep trying to get stronger. I'll do something more in-depth about my, uh, like, goals and routine going forward pretty soon. What's something you haven't done yet but just but really just want to do? Probably write a book. Probably write a book, yeah. It's hard to justify to yourself though because you think I've got enough to say. This is going to be shit. The answer is probably. Any languages you want to learn in the future? Um, yeah, maybe. It's... Spanish would be good. Portuguese would be good. Do a little tour around Brazil. French. French is nice, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I do. Is it normal to feel old at 25? No. Or that you're not making the most of your 20s? I think it's normal to feel like you're not making the most of right now, but that's just an underappreciation for things most of the time. But maybe it's true. Maybe you're actually not making the most of things. That is that is also possible, right? Um, it's hard to say. These are the things, right? Everything's about making the call yourself, right? On the one end of the continuum, you have to appreciate things, try and appreciate the little things and the basics and the fundamentals of life as much as you can. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have to push yourself, make sure you are doing everything to make your circumstances as good as you can, to enjoy yourself, you know, to get all the good shit, to have, have a good life, right? So it's, it's some kind of balance of those things, like somewhere in the middle, like, or, or more like when do I do that and when do I do that? You know, it's just like everything is a continuum, right? And you got to select, you got to make your selections, right? So uh, I think it's somewhat normal to feel like you're not making the most of you tw of, of 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 any age really you like certainly at times yeah you know but because you you all, it's easy to look back on times and be like oh the, the, they were the good days like that was sick but when have you ever felt like you didn't feel like that at the time you, when have you ever been like oh this is like these are the good times right you have to remind yourself of that you have to really like you know wake up and realize the pattern right because if, if when you're 20, you look back on when you're 81, 81, if when you're 20, if when you're 21, you look back on when you're 18 and you say, oh, they were the good days, that was sick, I was 18 again, right? And then when you're 25, you look back on when you were 21 and you say, oh, they were the good days, I wish I was 21 again, that was sick. And then when you're 30, you look back on when you were 25 and you say the same shit, then notice the pattern, man. Realize that now, one day you're going to look back on now and be like, this was sick, right? You know what I mean? Obviously, you do have to make sure you're making the most of shit. Not the most, like, there's this... You have to make sure you're having a good time, right? But there's, there can't be this pressure on, like, most is a dangerous word, right? Can I get the most out of everything? It's, it's like, puts this sense of, like, desperation in you. Can I get the most out of every situation, every year of my life, every day? Can every day be as good as it possibly can be? I feel like that's a that's like gonna hinder the actual fulfillment of that. Do you know what I mean? Because it's just put so much pressure on everything. How are you so laid back and chill AF? Probably by accident, mate. Right? Don't know. Somewhat, somewhat nature, somewhat nurture. I don't know. I would certainly consider myself as laid back and chill AF, right? If if it's all right to say that, is that all right to say about yourself? Who knows. I just can't I just can't answer. Maybe it's it's obviously a combination of like something inside me and then something about my life up to this point, right? And then it begs the question like can you be more like that? Because a lot of people are super uptight, right? 
Can you be less like that if it's a problem? It might be a problem being too chill, right? It might stop you, it might hold you back. It might have held me back in life, right? Maybe it has. It's a possibility, right? Can you be more or less like that? Probably like, but it's a lot of conscious thought and time and you're teetering on the edge of, of navel gazing, too much introspection and not enough getting on with it. When you think about like yourself too much, like it's just, uh, everything is so complex, mate. Describe teen Joey D. I was a bit of a nerd, mate. Proper nerd. A uh, bit of a romantic. Like, I suppose I'm still a romantic, and not in the romantic sense, like boy girl, but a romantic. And I mean, it, it extends to that, but I mean, like a romantic in the sense of like being an idealist about life. I'm still like that, though, to be honest. I was the same except skinny and just more more of a nerd, like less like less less confident. But I wasn't like I was just normal levels of confident. I wasn't like you know this. It's not a, it's not a story about this. I was a shy teen and then I went to the gym. <laughs> you know, did a few sets. Now I'm confident. Now I go to the club. Now I rock up in the club with the boys. Like, still, that's pretty normal teen, I think. Who knows what normal is though? Will we ever get to see any Tinder slash graft related vids again? The world needs it. Um, I've been with my girlfriend for four years and we live together. It's probably inappropriate to download Tinder. I would, I would say probably not. Probably a no. Probably a no for that kind of content. Tips to avoid burnout. Do you, Joey D, burn out as a sick individual? I appreciate the compliment, thank you. I am unworthy. Tips to avoid burnout. My tip is just not working that hard. Just be a bit lazy, man. Just chill it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I actually just don't work that hard, right? I mean, I work... It, it's so weird, because I do more than eight hours a day, right? And I work seven days a week on something, but nothing ever feels like work to me. You know? And if... and. I, yeah, I certainly, I just don't work that hard, really, I, I think, maybe. Um, burnout, like, I've heard about it a lot, but never experienced it, but I'm sure it's a real thing, man. But it's the pressures of being alive in 2020 in fucking uber-competitive hustle culture. Get to the top, you know. Like, you have to, like, be the most successful. You have to fucking be flashing your shit on Instagram. You have to be, like, making the most money. You have to be on a yacht with fucking Dan Bilzerian and that. Like, just chill out, man. Just get what you need from life, man. Not what, not what, not the most. It's the idea of the most again, right? If if you feel like you like get into like burnout zone, you're having a fucking breakdown and shit. Is that good, right? Do less of what got you there, right? That's just normal. That's just is that. I feel like that's common sense, son. I didn't mean that to sound like condescending. <laughs> Are you ambitious? Do you see yourself owning a supercar or anything fancy in the future? I think I'm ambitious in the sense, like I said before, like I'm ambitious in the sense of being like an idealist. I believe that, that there are there are fucking high levels of human existence that we can reach, on and I want to get there, right? You know, and and getting there is you know, a rich, a rich tapestry, right, it's, there are many ingredients, um, but like, ambitious, I guess you mean financially, yeah, I, I would say so, yeah, I'm ambitious financially, I've never felt in a rush to get, like, get most money as possible, as young as possible, um, and like, get myself a supercar, maybe one day I will get one, yeah, hopefully, I'd like to make a million quid, Billion would be nice. I'll settle for somewhere in the middle, like ten mil. Ten mil isn't in the million. <laughs> ten ten mil isn't in the million. Isn't in the middle of one million and a billion. But you know what I mean, like somewhere in between. Yeah, it'd be nice. Nothing wrong with fancy shit, man. If you can afford it, you know what I mean. If you, if if everything has the right place in your mind, the right amount of importance, you know the right attitude towards it, not too much like invested in it, not too much of your own personal fucking happiness tied to this thing, then fucking supercars are sick, man. Who doesn't want a supercar? I want one. Bird is being, oh my God. Bird slash girl. 
I say girl for anyone who's watching who's not familiar with the term, with the lingo, bird. I don't know if, I don't think you're allowed to say bird. I once got a lot of shit on Twitter for calling girls birds, but anyway, that's another story. Bird has been parking outside of her ex's house and stalking his social media. Salvageable? I would say not. I would say that's probably not salvageable. It's, it uh, shows uh, an unhealthy obsession that your girlfriend has with her ex. Uh, and, you know, aside from that, it shows some tendencies that may want, may one day be inflicted upon yourself. You may want to look out of your window with you, your current girlfriend sat in the front room and see your ex sat outside. Like, you know, you don't really want that. I would leave immediately. Has moving into a house given you a sense of achievement or is it just another vibe? It's, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. Sense of achievement. Nah, not really. It feels nice to have my own house. It's not really my own, is it, though? Because I, I owe the bank hundreds of thousands of pounds. So, not really a sense of achievement. I don't get a sense of achievement from things. And I have really fucking tried. Really tried, right? I haven't got that much of a sense of achievement th from anything in my life, right? Not achievement, like, if you're going to talk strictly about that. Like, I've had, a, I've had a sense of, like, some kind of fulfillment and stuff like that, like, but if we're talking specifically about achievement, I don't think I've ever, I don't know if I've ever felt that to the extent to which I would like to feel it before I die, you know what I mean? I want to feel it, man. I want to feel like I've done some sick shit. But to do sick shit, you have to do sick shit. That's the secret, mate. So, I'm going to get busy. When's the home gym tour slash video coming out? So I'm going to do a home gym transformation video. Where I'm going to like show the whole process of it. Show like the build. Not build, but you know, show the process of, of doing it. And then, as a separate video, because that's already going to be super long, I'm going to do like a home gym tour where I go through all the specific equipment that I've got like cost of everything, where I got everything from, all that kind of stuff, and I talk a bit more in depth, because if I try and do that in the same video, I'll be rushing it to try and keep the video like under an hour. So I do it separate, because then people who want to watch one can watch one. Some people just want to see the before and after pick, right? So, yeah. Oh, I didn't say when I was going to do it. Maybe like not far off now. A week or two? Advice for traveling by yourself? Just do it, man. Don't know. Uh... I haven't got any. I haven't got any. Just, just fucking go, mate. At what age did you realise you got to get your shit together? Um, that's a difficult one. I don't know. If I, I don't know if I, I've ever realised that, right? Or at least not felt like I've got to get my shit together. Probably would have, but then again, if I wasn't earning all right money, if I didn't have a house and all that kind of shit, maybe I'd feel like that a bit. Maybe I'd feel like I've got to get my shit together a bit. I certainly felt a sense of, like, underachievement or inaction. or I felt like there was a lack of action in my, like, late teens, early to mid-twenties, right? But that was, looking back, that was because I was, I was like, getting experiences and shit. Around. It's hard to do that at the same time as, like, making pro, like, get life experience whilst making life quote unquote progress really getting life experience is life progress right but it's, uh, when you accumulate in your experiences you have this fucking itch itch to get on with shit he's like oh I need to, need to get on with it and he's getting stuff need to like start a career and shit you know and like I felt this weird sense of like something was I felt this sense of like it was as if something was overdue happening like something was gonna happen something needed to happen in my life it's like a but but it wasn't happening and I couldn't make it happen like a like a sense of being frozen right I felt this sense a lot in my and if I could tell myself something it would be like don't feel that man chill it because you're accumulating experiences you're learning you're becoming who you're gonna be right you're not ready yet right you're not ready yet to go and do your shit because you haven't learned enough shit right and uh so I never really, I don't think I ever realised, like, I don't know if that even answers the question or it's completely separate, but. Do you consider yourself a creative person? No, not really. No, I'm not creative. I don't think. Not because I've, I've been 
friends with and known creative people, right? I don't think I'm creative, but it doesn't have to stop you, man. It doesn't have to stop. Just because you're not creative doesn't mean you can't create, right? Some things are going to take me longer to do, right? Do you know what I mean? Some people could make a video that is as good as my video in half the time, right? doesn't mean I'm not going to do it. It just means it's going to take me twice as long, you know? What to do on a first date? I mean, what do you want me to, do you want me to go on it for you or just something free, something low cost, mate? Museum, a free museum, obviously. Uh, like art galleries and shit. You don't have to pretend to be into art. I'm not saying like, oh yes, this is a pre raphaelite era, of, you know. I'm just saying, <laughs> free stuff. Go for a walk if it's nice. Go out. I was gonna say in the woods. It sounds creepy, like, but you know. Public, public parks are good, if it's nice weather. Picnics, you know, can't beat a picnic. What made you want to buy a house and stop renting? Uh, I think just because I could, and because I just didn't want to be paying someone else's mortgage, really, because you can be paying your own, do you know what I mean? I was in that place, like, our rent was just over a thousand a month, I was in the place for, let's round it up to four years, it wasn't, it was more like three and a half, let's round it up to four years, right? So I paid, what, 40k? off someone else's mortgage, between me and my brother, like, a bit more. That's not ideal. Could have paid off my own mortgage if I would have had a deposit earlier to put into a house. Have you always paid for meals when you go out with your girlfriend? No. No, not whatsoever. You know, sometimes I pay. Sometimes she pays. She, she, especially early on. Early on, we pretty much split stuff down the middle, like, um, it's different when your lives are fully intertwined and you, 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 you know, it's like long term and you're, you're living with someone and all that kind of stuff. Cause then like, there's not really any such thing because like your money is each other's money really. I mean, it's not, I'm not saying you have to start opening joint bank accounts and doing mad shit. It's crazy, man. But like... It's different, man, because if you want to, like, let's say I want to do something, and she's like, ah, oh, can't afford it this month. I'm like, all right, well, I still want to do it, so I'm going to wait till next month, or am I just going to pay for it? You know what I mean? I'm just going to pay for it, aren't I? But she's, so, she's quite, she's independent, like, and, you know, makes money herself and pays, like, contributes, contributes a lot, like, you know. Tattoos, meaning slash future ones. Uh, I don't really have meanings to me tattoos. They just uh, they just mean that at one point I, th I thought that they looked cool. Now, do I still think they look cool? At times, bits of them, not all of them, but I don't lose sleep over it. I don't really have that much meaning to me. I'm not like, I don't, I think anything with meaning at some point is gonna become a bit cheesy to you because you have to see it every day, right? So if you get a quote on you, sometimes you're not, like one day you're not gonna like that quote, man. You know what I mean? Is it hard to maintain a physique like yours for years? I mean, all of those diets, workout, etc. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, it depends what you mean as hard. Like, it can be hard if you hate it. Anything's hard if you hate doing it, but if you enjoy training, the hardest thing is getting there, but maintaining is, is much easier once you are there. Like, but you have to get there in the first place, like, which takes time, but you make it fun, don't you? Well, I made it fun by having a YouTube channel and stuff like that. That's what kind of made it fun for me. I think that's it. I think we're through all the questions. There's a lot more questions. But that's where we got to. Like, they're all the ones that are screenshotted. I just picked a few out at random. So, thanks for watching. Man. I hope you enjoyed the QA. I enjoyed making it. It's just super chilled, man. Super laid back. Sometimes people say that I talk as if I'm going to fall asleep and stuff like that. I don't know if it's an insult, but I don't really take it as one. It's just, just super chill, man. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later. Jordy Lenny is my hero.